situation, so she promised the officer that she was going to send in a check, and the officer had no reason to not believe her. She looked like a very good, you know, lady, and uh, she was really making an effort to pay the ticket to him, so he decided to let her go and uh, not take her to uh, spend the night at, uh, you know, the police station. Thanks to this report, even though, you know, he didn't know where she was at the time, but thanks to this report, they had a kind of a timeline, you know, and where she was at that specific time when he stopped her because of that uh, speeding situation, and it puts her in a particular way on the road, and so she didn't make it all the way there, so kind of help the police to get more of a smaller area to search for her. The family continued to put flyers and visit every town along the way to try to find her. At this point, with no answers, the mother had a... This was pretty sad. Um, the mother had a dream, and uh, apparently it was like they were all sleeping, and in the middle of the night, Lisa, which of course is missing right now, but in her dream, she woke up desperately crying, Mom, Dad, Mom, Dad, and, you know, that kind of thing. If you have kids, you know what this, how this makes you feel, you know, you're trying to comfort them and tell them how everything is okay and uh, it's just a bad dream, but uh, for some reason, the mom kind of, it made her think that um, Lisa wasn't really going to come back. made out of wood and and 
much attention to it. They were just trying to explain why he was, or he tried to kill himself on that date. But, um, I don't know, I just thought that it's worth mentioning the guy because, you know, it affected him. He had nothing to do with it. And, um, even though he had nothing to do with it, and, uh, it really did take the police a really long time to find who actually killed her. And it doesn't matter because people were still looking at him in a different way of, you know, before he uh, stopped Lisa that night. And uh, I guess that's faith or fate, <laughs> I should say, not faith, but fate or, you know, how it's supposed to be. But I thought that he deserved a little time in this video. side story of the main story but he is still a person and he still has a life and you know I don't know if he's alive still but um, it's it's kind of weird how sometimes you know with this kind of uh, cases you you know not it's not only the person that died or the family but you know everything around it that it's um, somewhat uh, changed you know Anyways, in the summer, well, months go by, and no dips, then years, and no dips, so it was pretty much a cold case, but in the summer of 2002, yep, you heard that right, 14 years later, the DNA technology, it's more advanced, of course, but this time, but, um, so they decide to enter the DNA and try to find a match, and lucky for them, they did find a match, and it was an inmate, Dale Wayne Eaton. Um, he is a 57-year-old, you know, back then, he was 57 years old, and he was in prison because he was carrying a gun without a permit or something like that. When they check his record, he had a very violent criminal record, but nothing like murder or rape. When he was out of jail, he lived pretty close to the area where the body was found. And apparently he had a tow truck. And he was the kind of guy that would wander the area waiting for somebody that needed to be towed or something. He didn't have business or anything, but he would just go around the neighborhood or the area and try to find people that needed his help. And that's how he made money. So, again... He has a violent criminal record. He lived close to where she was found. And uh, he was kind of a... Uh, apparently he lived in a house that was given to him by his parents or his family. But he had no house. I should say land. Um, it was ruins of a house. And uh, he lived very poorly. Apparently he had no electric electricity or water or anything it was very primitive living in the area so the police I mean they have the DNA they know he lived close by but they need more proof you know the DNA actually proved that he had sex with her but no not that he killed her you know what yes um, that's what the police said of the report so the police go to the color well, go to Colorado to ask him questions about Lisa. He was very calm at first, but when the police didn't mention Lisa, he transformed and started yelling and saying that he had nothing to do with her. Like um, the police was saying that uh, the police officer was saying that uh, she she no him <laughs> he um, was very calm and you know collected. All of a sudden, uh, he changed completely because, you know, they mentioned her name. So, it, that was kind of a big red flag for the police. Now, the police get a warrant to search his trailer because, again, he was living in a small trailer. Disgusting looking. I mean, you can be poor and live with no water and no electric power. And you can live in something a lot better than what he had. I mean, he, it was filthy. It was gross. It was um, in a very secluded area. 
feel for the family. I think that when you don't have kids and you hear an 18 year old, you're like, okay, it was an adult, but when you have kids that are that age, you're like, they're still kids. I can't put myself in the mom's position. I really can't. Especially knowing that she had a very responsible kid and uh, she was doing the right thing. She was being she was working, she was studying, she was doing everything right and that, you know, that somebody took her away from you and took her away from this world and everything that she could have become if she had the chance to do it. It's, it's sad and it's, <laughs> you know, the police officer, the sheriff that was involved and that his career wasn't, you know, the same or that he kind of ruined him all this that happened to her, that it took 15 years to get a conviction, that it took 14 years to find the guy. I'm not shaming the police here. I think that they did everything they could to resolve this case, but at the same time, you know, I it can't stop feeling bad for, you know, it can't not only the family and the people that knew her, the boyfriend, officer that his life changed in just a regular stop and I wonder if he wonders if he took her to the police station and kept her that night for not paying the ticket if she would have been alive you know wouldn't that suck like if you were him and you had that possibility and you were trying to be a nice guy and like okay you send the check in, okay? Don't, you know? Um, because you, you know it is a nice girl, and uh, and then everything turns against you, and uh, makes you wonder, you know? And I, I hope that he didn't think what I'm thinking right now. You know, what if he did take her to the station? What if? I hope the guy didn't but I'm sure he did, and uh, that kind of haunted him as well. Um, true crime, it's, it's interesting, it's, uh, it's just one of those things that a lot of people are into, I don't want to say enjoy, but are into, but when it affects you, because it's your family member, it's your friend, it's somebody you know, it's your neighbor, it's, you know, in this case, a regular stop, uh, like this police officer, and it changes your life. I just think it's, it's just, you know, it's an overall sad situation. But at the same time, you know, I, I just think that it changes you, changes you in a way that you, even if you're not part of the family, going through this and, you know, investigating this, the, the detectives that work in this case, I just think that this kind of thing changes you. It does something inside you that you are not going to be the same person ever again. Um, and I find it <clears throat> sad and at the same time life-changing. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. that there wasn't people like this in this world. I wish that, uh, that, you know, we could live in a safer place and that this kind of thing, thing wouldn't happen, but, you know, it's, it, I just feel like there's, uh, there's so many people out there who need medicine, a doctor, something that can help them because I refuse to believe that there is evil people in this world. I choose to believe that uh, there is something wrong with them. I want to believe that there is something physically wrong with them that makes them, they 
detached from a situation like this and uh, become a monster um, to another human being or animal or whatever, you know, it's just that when you do that kind of dumb stuff or stuff, uh, you have to really not be in your right mind to do that kind of thing. I, I want to believe Peace.